Many developers consider that working with div tags designing layouts is very complex. But trust me, by the end of this module, I will make sure everyone including the novice beginners can develop a professional responsive layouts in ASP.NET MVC. In order to start working with the bootstrap and develop a responsive MVC page view, the very first step will be understanding how bootstrap works and what is meant by bootstrap grid system. Bootstrap categorizes the devices into four types. The first one is extremely small devices like phones or mobiles with a pixel size lesser than 786. And the second one is small devices such as tablets with a size greater than 786 pixels. And the third one is medium devices such as small desktops having a size lesser than 992 pixels and the fourth and the last one is large devices desktops having large screen size that is 1200 pixels or above to represent extremely small devices we have been provided with the class called xsx and so to represent small devices we have been provided with the class column smx and to represent the medium devices we have been provided with the class called MDX and to represent the large devices we have been provided with the class called LGX where X is a number between 1 to 12. Now let us understand the bootstrap grid system. The grid system starts with a container which consists of rows and each row will consist of 12 equal columns. Now if our requirement is to have a full width content to be displayed on a medium device then we need to use call md12 which will occupy all the 12 columns. If our requirement is a two column layout where half of the screen should be occupied with one content and the other should be occupied with a different content then we need to use call md6 which occupies the first six columns and once again if I use call md6 then it will occupy the remaining six columns present within the grid row. Sometimes we require a two column layout like block site which means that instead of equal columns the first column will occupy the majority of the portion and the second column will occupy less. So for that requirement we can use call md8 for the first column and providing call md4 for the second column will occupy the remaining four columns present within the row. Sometimes we may have a requirement such that instead of placing the content from the first cell, we would like to provide some gap or empty space and then we want our content to be displayed. Then if we write call md offset 3, call md3, then first three columns will be left blank and then next three columns will be filled with the content. Now if we use call md offset 1 call md 3 then from the filled columns one column will be skipped and then three columns will be occupied with the content. Now we might have got an idea for the medium device. If our requirement is to develop a responsive application to be supported by the computers, tablets and mobiles then we need to use the classes accordingly. For example, if we provide the values as call md8, call sm6, call xx12 and then call md4, call sx6. Now just pause the video for a couple of seconds and just imagine how would be the result in various devices. Let me explain based on the above class definitions. In the medium device, the first column will occupy 8 cells. And then second column content will occupy four cells. Within the tablet, the first column will occupy six cells and the second column will occupy the next six cells. And finally, within the mobile device, the first column content occupy the entire row and pushes the second column content to occupy six cells in the next row. If you have guessed the same, then you have already understood the bootstrap grid system. And if you haven't guessed it now, no worries, once we complete the demo practically, I promise everyone would have understood the bootstrap grid system. 
and will be in a position to start developing responsive application development in MVC. Let us start with the demo. 